Good afternoon, everyone. Prep and Mama here. How's it going? I wanted to get on here and go over scenario four with you. Um, scenario four is a grid down situation. So let me go ahead and read through this scenario. If you're just jumping in here, this is a series I'm doing based on what I learned at um, the local class I took, put on at our search and rescue headquarters and it's called Prep U, and it was put on by a local person who has funding through Search and Rescue to teach these courses for preparedness because they realize that our county is not prepared for emergency situations that can and or will come up, including uh, fire, fire safety, you know, like wildfire, and of course earthquake because we are on the Pacific Northwest and we do expect a rather large earthquake within the next several years. So anyway, I took the course. It was a seven week course and this is scenario four that we went over in class. And like I said before, this has helped me pinpoint my weaknesses in prepping. And there are a lot of them. <laughs> okay, scenario four, grid down. Okay, it's late February and the weather forecast predicts a series of storms. You are awoken by a loud crashing sound only to find a tree has fallen partially on your home. The structure is intact, but your window is broken. You are now without power. You notice the tree has pulled the power lines from your home. Your children spent the night at a friend's house and your spouse was unable to make it home the night before due to the four inches of snow that has fallen. Hundreds of trees have come down onto the roadways taking power lines with them. It takes 21 days to restore power to your home. Okay, a couple things that I have to address here, and one is, um, I know four inches of snow is going to sound piddly to some of you, but we're in Oregon and we don't get a ton of snow, um, but I doubt four inches would keep my husband from coming home. Also, my kids will never be spending the night at anyone's house because we just have a rule that they don't, we don't do sleepovers. So, but for this scenario, I'm just going to go with it, okay? Okay, so things to consider. Um, number one, trees are down all over as are power lines. How long could you survive without assistance in your home if this event happened today? Do you know the difference between finding shelter at home and sheltering in place? Um, I'm sure they went over this, but this might be the, court, the class that I missed. <laughs> um, I don't know the difference between shelter at home, finding shelter at home and sheltering in place. I think sheltering in place is, um, wherever you are, whatever room you're in, you need to stay in versus just staying at home. Um, but I'm not sure. How long could I survive without assistance? Um, if we can get to our second location to get more supplies, quite a long time. Not sure how much propane I have at my current location. That's something to think about. So propane is something I need to make note of. I have plenty of um, green and seasoned firewood, but um, right now what I have is kind of green. So that might be difficult to use um, for heating and cooking, but as long as I have propane and charcoal briquettes, I should be okay. Uh, two, communications are down. Does your family know what to do if they are away from home during an event and you cannot contact each other? Do you have an out-of-state contact to share information with? We do, but I actually need to speak with her about that and make sure that that's okay and make sure that um, that number is in everyone's phone. Um, but my kids don't carry phones though, so that's kind of a problem. Okay, um, three, do you have the equipment to remove the tree limbs that have broken the window? Yes, we have multiple chainsaws. Um, four, do you have the supplies to seal up a broken window? Yes, we do. Uh, five, do you have an alternate heat source? Uh, we have a couple. Uh, we have a fire pit outside. That doesn't really help the inside of the house. We have lots of blankets. It just doesn't really get that cold here. Um, I'm pretty sure my husband has some other ways to heat the house, but, um, we do have a gas fireplace, and I think that works without power, but I have to check on that. Do you have a way to heat water? Yes, propane. Do you have food that does not require heating or a way to cook food without power? Yes. Do you have a source of light? We have LED lanterns and flashlights. Uh, nine, what do you need to survive this event? Well, you need 
your head about you. <laughs> um, you need ways to cook your food and you need ways to get water. And of course we earn wells without a simple pump. So a simple pump is on our list of things to get. In the meantime, I have water barrels that I am in the process of cleaning and filling. And, um, and I have five cases of water on hand right now. So uh, food, water, a way to heat and a way to cook and a way to yeah, keep warm. That's all we need. Uh, so like I said, it doesn't get that cold here. Our house is newer and well insulated, so, or not newer, but it's been, it's been renewed. <laughs> so um, I'm not really concerned about staying, you know, it getting too cold in the house outside, definitely for sure, but too cold in the house would be, um, you know, I, we would be fine. We have blankets and like I said, we have a gas fireplace. So, um, yeah, I think this is the least scary of the scenarios for me. I'm fairly comfortable. If I'm at home, I'm fairly comfortable, right? Um, it's, it's, if something happens when I'm away, that makes me very uncomfortable, especially considering I have three children with me under 11 every day and one of them is disabled and has special needs uh so anyway um that is scenario four i'm not sure if there was a scenario five or i missed it or i've misplaced it um, if there is i will come back and do a scenario five if not i'm going to go through some of these other handouts that i got and the first one i'm going to go through is tools and supplies to have on hand someone's just got to be a star Okay, we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay, so um, tools and supplies to have on hand um, in case anything happens. So there's a pretty comprehensive list here that I want to go through um, and talk to you about. And let's talk about if we have these things um, on hand at our homes in case we need them um, in, a, in a bad situation. And um, if there's um, any other inf interesting information in my handouts, I will go over that too. Um, but I was not able to find... Um, scenario five so we'll see um, if I find it uh, if there was one I will go back I think there was one if there's one I will come back and I will discuss it with you otherwise I'm gonna go through these supply lists and I might go ahead and talk about bags um, I am putting together my GHB right now so uh, but we're still in the middle of Christmas so we're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and um, concentrate on that a little bit and then when I come back We'll go over some more of that stuff that I learned at PrepU. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Sorry for the weird camera stuff and, and, and child interruptions. <laughs> I told yeah. her she could not be in this video and she came upstairs anyway, so we're gonna have to have a discussion. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, that's, a, that's scenario four. Thanks for joining me. If you are interested in preparedness from um, a mom's perspective, a mom with lots of kids and some special needs and different things, different health things going on. Um, keep coming back and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. Thanks for joining me and it's Prep and Mama out.